This is Suzanne Conrad, and I am here to talk to you about how to take what you've already done and create a vision from it. So what we've already done this first week is you have written the power of knowing what you want. You've been able to put things outside of the circle and put some new things inside of the circle. You've also, many of you have done your interviews. Well, that was pretty interesting, huh? <laughs> and seeing that the, the main focus there is to take the upgrade and to see that you could be the person that other people see you as. Because for the most part, we're, uh, we're often a bit stingy and um, in lack about who we actually are. And the people around us can see our gifts often better than we can. And then you've also worked with this idea of above and below the line so that you can really write a legacy that's from your choice instead of whatever circumstances you were born into and that you're facing. It's interesting, this weekend I was just leading a workshop and, um, and I, I met several, several people in it. Um, a lot of folks in that age between 25 and 35 where uh, a person is often in the thick of their career and often finding, wow, this isn't really what I wanted to do. Almost every time, without fail, I'll say that those folks that are in careers that they do not want to be in, when they unwind the knot, find that someone else set the goal for them, for what they were going to study in school, who they were be going to become. And you could say in a way that that goal got set below the line. So, for instance, people often become whatever, you know, business, businessmen, lawyers, doctors, in order to please their parents or from a spirit of obligation. And it isn't actually from deep understanding of ourselves or what that career even entails. So it doesn't mean that any of that's wrong. What I am saying is there's a reason why I have asked you to do the pre-work that you've done um, to be able to see, well, what... What is it that you want? What is it that you could be great at? Um, and for those of you that might be taking this class to be able to make those steps of those same young people that were with me in the weekend that I just completed, what you might want to be able to do is see you know, how you could release yourself from the investment that you've already made. So for instance, if you've invested a lot of money in your career or a lot of time, see, because we talked in our first video about how you're spending your life, it could be, there could be a charge. When I mean a charge, I mean a, an energetic grip on something like your student loans that you might need to be able to release. And let's say that you spent $100,000 to become a lawyer and you now know that you don't want to be a lawyer. It's both challenging in the world to make enough money to both pay those off and to build a new career. Yet the only thing more challenging than that is to attempt to do that while you're below the line in guilt and in obligation about having taken that path in the first place. So the first place to always work with a vision is to discover what your body sensations are that take you below the line, see if you can release things. And the videos that you've watched that are part of the iGoYou website will help you with some of those shifts and I believe each other meaning the other people in the groups the other people in the course can help you I'd love to see some people quote uh, post questions about how do you do that here's my actual situation so there's that aspect so uh, congratulations to the people that have already posted their vision um, my sense is these are things you maybe had already written before you signed up for the class. So I encourage you to read your visions out loud and find the places in them that really excite you and see if there's any of them that are just sort of dead air, like something you filled in because you thought it needed to sound a certain way. Um, and also see if you're fully challenging yourself. Like where would your big, hairy, audacious goal live in your vision? And maybe it's already there. So if for you in 10 years being able to buy a house is huge, great. Or if it is to be able to be in a stable relationship and you visualize that, great. If you're already on that trajectory and it's pretty much an extrapolation of your current life, it certainly counts as a vision and it's fine. And my comment to you would be 
see if you can see deeper see if you can see further see if you are um, completely 100% there with the legacy that you want to lead so you might find some more things if you're writing your vision for the very first time well then welcome and know that it's um, there isn't a right way to do it so many of the ones that you'll see on the class are done from the perspective of a moment in time as uh, I have led many people through that process there's a guided vision that allows you to do that like what are you seeing tasting smelling touching that kind of thing some of you may have a vision though that's more like a list um, like almost like a list of goals so it, it has a different way but if that's where you're at write it down post that so if there's certain things that are more like a bucket list for you or things that you want to accomplish um, experiences that you want to have within the next 10 years then that can also be the skeleton and the bones of your vision um, there are also people that write a vision that's a combination of those two things so it could be a moment in time that is a particular celebration of an accomplishment so for instance it could be a headline that someone might read about you in Wired magazine or it could be you accepting um, um, applause at the opening of the reading of, of all of your poetry or it could be um, where you accept um, congratulations for having um, oh I just talked to this guy he um, he, he kite surfed from the Aleutian Islands to um, to Russia <laughs> you know like whatever it might be so there might be a moment in time of you reaching some finish line so it's a in a way a combination of a vision and a goal so often for people um, that gives them access so one of those three ways either a list or a particular moment in time that's more generalized in your everyday life and then it could also be a peak moment of of some celebration accomplishment some kind of headline so let's see what else would I want to know if I were you about visions um, to reiterate what I shared with you in our first uh, our first first video see if you don't write a vision you might think oh I'm a person who doesn't have a vision well that's only partially accurate what you actually are is a person who has a vision like your brain mind spirit combination has a vision you just don't know what it is and it could be a correct record within you of your life to be expressed and it's just a matter of you discovering it and articulating it and beginning to share it and bring it to your conscious mind and build it yet what's more often the case is you might not know your vision because there is a vision in there that's wrong for you meaning it's one that was placed in there by somebody else else or by a societal belief and for you to think that you don't have a vision is incorrect you do just like if you say oh, I don't have goals you do have goals not having goals is a kind of goal okay so like not having goals would be um, the goal that it is is I just live whatever comes at me like I live from circumstance I am the seagrass of the planet kind of thing <laughs> and then someone who doesn't have a vision what the reality is is we are a combination of all the visions that are projected on us and we are living from that sea of the legacy that we were born into so I want to challenge those of you that took the time to sign up for the class and uh, to be here to really recognize that just because you haven't written a vision doesn't mean that you don't have one you have both the one that's within you that's there that's there for you to begin to tap into and express and you also have the one that may be authentically laminated onto you by other people and intentions and circumstances and you're going to need to learn to separate those things out and the way to do it is to begin to grapple with some of these exercises and to get it in writing um, or to do a collage so another way to get it a vision if you're feeling a bit stuck I just did this with a, a, a close family member this last week 
is uh, do a speed collage. So set a timer, give yourself 30 minutes and a whole bunch of magazines and rip out everything that you're attracted to. And then set the timer for another 30 minutes and collage it all together. Like don't think, just keep it silent. Go, 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 glue stick, scissors, you know, fury, right? And then take a look at it and see what does it show you? What is it showing you about what you're attracted to and what you want? Uh, so that's another way to access it. And just in closing, I, I want to show you, so like in my, um, in my I Go You booklet, I do a number of different things, but one of the things I do is I make small pocket collages. So this is a small pocket collage that <clears throat> on one level didn't really um, make sense to me. I'll show it to you again, although I'm concerned about how this camera, um, it doesn't let you really read the reading, but it says Oasis and Perfectly Imperfect. There's a couple different unusual things there. There's a Buddha and some harbor seals and a whale. And what it is, though, for me, it's about it's about my own process for creating my backyard garden. So it's actually a goal that I've um, I don't know that I want to say struggled with, but it's been a little tricky for me. So the way that I have um, helped myself move through that is to create a mini pocket collage, not of the garden of itself but of the things that I know support me in getting there. So I know that part of it is about sanctuary, oasis, there's a peacefulness in it. And certainly I don't want to have a humpback whale breaching in the middle of my garden. <laughs> but what it represents for me is um, nature, something wild, everything doesn't need to be tamed, right, in my space. And that from that, it's perfectly imperfect. So with that note, I'd uh, like to allow you to continue to write your visions, to share them with each other, to join groups, and um, be perfectly imperfect and, and share those by the end of this week. And thank you very much. I'll be reading visions on the plane tonight. Bye-bye.